Hello, welcome back to Catholic Home Life. My name is Lindsay. Today's theme for the video, I wanted to talk to you about saints and holiness and how that is what our calling is. And that can seem a little daunting and overwhelming. And I've been reading a few books lately that have really given me some insights to growing in holiness. And I wanted to share that with you. I wanted to start out by talking with you about what a saint is. And I've mentioned this before in my video of why I'm still Catholic and I will have that linked up above. But I just wanted to go over it really briefly again. So a saint is a person who lived out heroic virtue in their life and they were holy and they were doing God's will in a heroic way. And the church has this actually really lengthy process of canonizing a person who lived their life in that way. I will have linked down below an article that I found on EWTN's website and it goes over all the nitty gritty of how the church canonizes a person and just the process that the church goes through to determine that they did in fact live heroic virtue. So that's what Catholics are talking about when they say saints, but all of us are called to be saints. Now we might not be canonized um, and recognized by the church as a person that lives heroic virtue, but there are what we call, I call lowercase s saints. So there's the capital S saints that were canonized and recognized officially by the church as saints. But there's also so many faithful people that we do recognize that they are likely in heaven and it's kind of unknown until we ourselves join them. We don't know who all is in heaven, but there are many more in heaven that are not recognized officially as saints. And we celebrate all the saints as Catholics on November 1st. That is the Feast of All Saints Day. It's a holy day of obligation and we are celebrating the saints that we know who are canonized and we're also celebrating the saints that we don't know that are in heaven with our Lord and um, they are the church triumphant. They're the church that's in heaven and we are connected to them through the body of Christ. So we are all called to be saints. We might not be canonized, but that doesn't diminish our call to seek holiness in every possible way. Now, when I was younger, I thought that to be a saint meant that you were perfect. And that's not true at all. <laughs> and in fact, if you read a lot of the lives of the saints, you will notice that throughout their life, they made a lot of mistakes, most of them, and there was conversion in their life and a constant turning to God um, through their mistakes. And I thought it was really unachievable to become a saint when I was younger. I still think that it would be very challenging, but by reading some of these books that I'm going to mention to you in a little bit, it makes me realize that that's the path we should be on and that's the goal that we should all have is to become saints. So the first book that I wanted to share with you is this book, The Extraordinary Parents of St. Therese of Lisieux. And her parents were just canonized a year, maybe two years ago. And they are St. Louis and St. Zeli, or I've heard it pronounced Zeli or Zeli Martin, and they are from France. And they were parents, obviously, because they are the parents of St. Therese. So I was so excited about this book because I was hoping it would be like a guidebook of how to be a saint if you are a mom and a wife. Um, so I picked this book up and I was reading through it and it is very inspiring, I have to say, very inspiring, so much wisdom and beauty and a real um, beautiful image of how they lived out their Catholic faith in their home and raised their children to be very holy. So I do recommend this book a lot, 
but it wasn't exactly a guidebook. Like, if you do A, B, and C, you will become a saint and your children will be saints. It wasn't quite that way. Instead of finding the clear steps of being a saint, what I actually found through this book was more profound for me um, because Saint Zaley, as a mom, she's kind of a different mom than I am. And reading this book made me realize she was a working mom. She made lace. She had her children go away to boarding school when they were older. And I'm a homeschool mom that doesn't work. So there's just these differences in my life kind of along the same lines as the mommy wars that you see online where you see moms that are doing things differently and you automatically compare what they're doing in their life to what you're doing in your life and you could question like am i doing things the right way am i doing right by my children so when i was reading this i found myself comparing my life and my choices as a mom to her life and the choices that she made as a mom and she also um, suffered through the death of three children, I think it is. Um, sh so she had these things in her life that I haven't had. And her life was very different than my life. So reading this book, the insight that I got from it was that God has a very specific path for each person. So even if your vocation is the same as another person, like I'm married and I have children, it doesn't mean that our lives will look the same and that our path to holiness is the same. So reading this book gave me actually a lot of comfort and consolation because I felt God telling me like this is a beautiful image of holiness and I have a beautiful plan for you too. And it's going to be different because every person has a different plan by God and God has a different will for each person. So this book kind of taught me that, that I shouldn't be so worried about what other people are doing. I can be inspired by them and they can lead me to God through their lives and through their holy example. But it doesn't mean that I need to all of a sudden go out and get a job and send my kids to boarding school. So that was the first book that I wanted to share with you about a beautiful example of married parents who are saints. And they have a great story and I really recommend you going and reading more about their lives because it's totally inspirational. I have another book here that I wanted to share with you and I've mentioned it before in other videos because I love this book. It is called The Fulfillment of All Desires by Ralph Martin. Now I've got to tell you, if I was stranded on an island and I could only have three books to read for the rest of my life, these are the books. The Bible, the Catechism, and this book. <laughs> this book is so good. It's a little hefty, a little intimidating. Um, there's lots of pages. You could hurt yourself if you're reading it in bed and you fall asleep and the book falls on your face. It's big. So to read it, what I recommend is they have a really great audible version of this book. So I would listen to it and I really like the reader too. He was very engaging and I could really pay attention to what he was saying as he read this book. So I got the audible version first and I would listen to that and I found myself really wanting to underline and highlight things that I was hearing. So then I went ahead and got the hard copy too because I wanted to mark it all up and write on what my favorite parts were. So that's why I have the audible version and then this too. Now we read this in our church for like a book study. And so I got to read it and discuss it with other parishioners in my parish. And now that we've finished the book study and finished the book, I find that I'm still craving listening to it. So when I'm making dinner or doing the dishes, I will turn on the Audible story and I will listen to it. And I keep this nearby because each time I hear this book, I really hear something new and I want to write it down. So in this book, Ralph Martin, it's kind of a synthesis of 
teachings of doctors of the church. I think there's seven doctors of the church that he highlights in here. And he just goes over the path to holiness that they lay out for you. And then the steps and advice and quotes from these saints on how to grow in holiness. So to become a saint, this book wasn't as much of a guidebook that I was looking for. This book, totally a guidebook. Like you could read this and kind of pinpoint where you are in the journey of holiness and then know what the next steps typically are for a soul. What is holiness, first of all? I think that's a great starting point to talk about how to grow in holiness. You need to know what holiness is. And this book has beautiful definitions of that that give you a clue. I have a few things that I wanna to read to you from here. Think of it as story time with Lindsay, okay? Maybe I should do a video series of me just reading this to you. So holiness, it says here, to be holy is not primarily a matter of how many rosaries we say or how much Christian activity we are engaged in. It's a matter of having our heart transformed into a heart of love. Later on in the book, he was talking about St. Therese of Lisieux and he says here, preferring God's will above all other things, including her own spiritual desires. This of course is what holiness is truly preferring God's will to all other things. And here's another image of holiness that I really loved. And this is, um, he's talking about St. Teresa of Avila. He says, Teresa in particular keeps reminding us that in prayer, we're primarily involved in a relationship, not an exercise or technique or the following of a method. I know for me, I always hear about the prayer life of another person and I think like, oh, I should be doing that. Like I should be saying all the decades of the rosary every day, or I should be doing a daily holy hour, or I should be going to daily mass. All these things that are really good, but first and foremost, God is looking for a relationship with you. And that's going to look different for each person. 